Uh, in this week's distributed data show, I'm hanging out with Eric Zietlo, who's one of our newest developer advocates, and he's going to take me down the rabbit hole on lightweight transactions in Cassandra. From Datastack, this is the Distributed Data Show. So we've been talking a lot this month about application development, and the reason that we were doing that is because, uh, you know, as developer advocates, we're out talking to people all the time, and we hear there are questions and concerns, and there are things that come up again and again, right? Right. So uh, you've actually been on the developer advocate team for a few months now, but you have a way deeper history than that with Cassandra. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You've gone back quite a ways. So actually, yeah, tell years. me that. Like, Tell me a little history there. Yeah, so um, I actually kind of skipped the relational part of most people's career. Um, oh, I, what a fortunate circumstance <laughs> for you. Okay. Yeah, I'm a little younger, so I yeah. uh, I got in in the generation right when NoSQL was kind of becoming a thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I went from you know some application development, software stuff, right. um, straight into like Cassandra. Okay. Um, started work as an SA. For our data stacks, yeah, um, did that for a couple of years, and then now I'm here. All right, awesome. So yeah, so you've seen it. You've talked to a, a lot of different customers because you were working in yes. the startup program. So yes, like, you've probably seen every problem in the book. So <laughs> seen a few. You've seen a lot of stuff that's come <laughs> up over few. time. Um, and one of the things that I want to talk about with you uh, is about this idea of using, like, kind of like using the mechanisms in Cassandra well. Yes. Um, we have this problem of, we talk a lot about data modeling and the importance of having a good data model. And a lot of times people will go through and do a good data model, and then the way that they apply it and build an application around it, they start to kind of stumble yeah. and fall down. Yeah. Uh, and, and so I actually have this ongoing conversation with the curriculum team, because they, um, they have topics like uh, batches and lightweight transactions yes. that they talk about yes. in the data modeling course. Right. And I'm well, like, those are, are those data modeling topics? It is. It is. Because it, it's data modeling is really the fundamental way you think about how your data is going to live and how it's going to react to what you need. So yeah. when it comes to batches, it, it actually affects how you're denormalizing data or how you're thinking about it. Because normally okay. we think about, how am I going to keep oh, my data consistent? Right. How, is, how is my you know, table over here that has most of the same data as my table over here how can I guarantee something about that? Because I, right. I, need, I need the data to be in both. So these are relational habits, by the way. Brother. Right. Like right. we have uh, this, we've been encouraging people, uh, to standard data modeling, write your data to multiple denormalized tables. Yes. And they're like, okay, I gotcha. I'm gonna do that. But what next? But then I wanna keep it in sync across those two right. tables because you told me to write to um, cars by color and cars by make. And so yes. I, I'm doing that, but Okay, now how do I keep those in sync when I do writes at the same time? Exactly. So, okay, batches are one. Batches so that's are one, a, That is sure. kind of a data modeling topic then. For sure. But then, what about lightweight transactions? Lightweight transactions, that's, yeah. Uh, I, need, I need acid semantics on my, uh, right. on my writes. I'm like, right. I got that right now, right? Lightweight transaction, I'm all good? Well, so, <laughs> first off, I'd like to say, Cassandra is actually, we, we say eventual consistency. Yeah. It is actually quite consistent. Okay. Um, Tunable. I like to say tunable. Tunable. Ex yeah. Exactly. Um, and, and you know, at the right consistency levels of operation, you're actually pretty good. You're, you're, the chances of you writing something and getting something bad back are extremely finite. Right. Especially if you're listening like quorum on reads. Yeah. Quorum on yeah. Writes. Best you're practice. Pretty good. Yeah. You're you're, you're going to be doing pretty well. But like, say you're a bank or something, and you have to guarantee. Like yeah. we, we can't just say pretty good. We have to absolutely guarantee that we're getting the most current data. Okay. Because think about if you had you know someone like swiping their card five times yeah. and, uh-oh, well, did they get charged twice? Did they not get charged? Yeah, like, what yeah. happens? Right. We got we to gotta actually have some solid... That's the number one pushback I get. Right. Yes. We got to have some solid guarantees. So lightweight transactions are kind of the answer to that problem. Okay. Um, what a lightweight transaction does is it actually... It, it's a blocking sort of operation where it, yeah. it actually locks the data Across nodes, because remember we're distributed. That, that's kind of a hard problem because in, in a hard. single box, yeah. okay, I'm, I'm locking data, I'm doing a write, like who cares? Right. Right. This one we actually have to coordinate between a lot of different places okay. in an intelligent manner, still being somewhat fast and performant, because I mean if it doesn't perform, why are we using it? Right. 
And so to do that, we use things like Paxos. Uh, we, we actually... What's Paxos? So Paxos is kind of a, a common way to do a uh, request, acknowledge, and, and, right. and basically run through a bunch of different steps that guarantee everyone's going to be happy, everyone's going to have the same thing at the end of the day, and no one's going to get mixed up. Right. So, Distributed consensus is that exactly. the shorthand I like exactly. to use. Okay, exactly. So, but like a light, there's like a key word in a lightweight transaction, which is lightweight. So right. what is that? What's the lightweight all about? <laughs> right. So the lightweight, so you're familiar with that, like a heavy transaction in a relational world Begin where Begin transaction, blah, 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 commit. <laughs> right. Right. Th there's similarities but we're not exactly okay yeah, so let me tease out the differences here I mean with lightweight transactions what you actually get is a a write comes in yeah and that write basically gets put it gets assigned a value and that value is used to determine what, what was first so if, if you have like a delete and a read and a whole bunch yeah. of stuff hitting really quick um, and you want to do a delete and then you're doing a range query on stuff you don't want that thing you just deleted to come back. That's right. So the lightweight will actually basically force that delete to happen before that range query read can read over that same data set. Okay. So you don't you don't get the same data back. And that's that's right. you know if you're using CL all or something, you're gonna actually get pretty good data, but you aren't gonna be able to guarantee that things happen in the right order, especially if you're doing asynchronous, you right. know, like it just there's no way to guarantee. It. Okay, yeah. So, so that's a, that quality that we're looking for. Uh, something right. called linearizable consistency. Yes. What these right. what these operations to happen in order, but I can't lock um, across multiple tables. Um, right. It's got to be on a single row, or actually more it more would, precisely a single, single partition, partition. Yes. Yeah. Right. Which partition can have multiple rows in Cassandra. Yes. Correct. So it's definitely scoped down to that level, and there's right. the, the two semantics: the if not exists. Yes. Like. Create something if um, not exists, if exists or update if and exists. And then the other one is the, the if um, exists. Right. Yeah. Uh, and then the other the other one I've seen is uh, the semantics of the if this if like if value equals equals. Yep. Inequalities. So, and I, or, and yep. I've used this for like inventory counts. Like if right. inventory count on this particular uh, asset or or product is four, uh, make it three. So there's right. There's four hotel rooms left. Um, and I, that's what I think it is. I think there's four hotel rooms left, but right, I'm it's the ride share that. problem. It's the yeah, how many three. seats do we have open? Yeah. What? How can we guarantee? Because you can't overbook. So yeah, it's it's exactly right, exactly. So if yeah. it's if it's uh, if I think it's four and I want to make it three, but it turns out that the database actually thinks that it's five, it's going to reject the transaction. Right. And there we're good. Where Precisely. people fall down is maybe thinking that um, like expecting that I can make a transaction that spans multiple tables. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's right. when you use a batch. You'd use a batch. This actually brings up something I need to look up later, which is if you can actually use lightweight transactions in batch, because I want to say you can. I remember reading about this. That's right, but I think like it's a only week one. ago. Yeah, okay, it's, research it's project one for us yes. later. And we should write a test pro write some Yes, test we code should. We should. And post it later. Okay, so yeah. tell me, there's actually some different consistency levels yes. associated with transactions. Can Very you talk me so. through, like, there's a regular con consistency level and then a serial consistency So, yeah, level. I mean, y your normal Cassandra, you're, you're running with Quorum in like 90, you know, some crazy high percentage of your use cases, yeah. right? Okay. So, to, to enable some of this blocking of the things that need to happen to happen, we actually run with serial and local serial. Okay. So, the kind of the rough equivalency would be like Quorum or local Quorum, respectively. Yeah. So, how many the, uh, nodes and what data centers you're actually Right, right. Yeah, all that behavior is going to be exactly the same as what you're used to with your Quorum and local Quorum. Okay. So, um, but basically what it's doing is it's saying, hey, this table, it, you know, we're, we're handling this in, with light rate transactions. That's right. how we want to behave here. And so, you get, um, it, there's actually an interesting anti pattern if you use. Um, lightweight transactions and non-lightweight transactions against the same table. Because yeah. you can actually get into this situation where, see that same problem we were talking about from before where I do a delete and then I do like a, an immediate read. Yeah. Um, if I'm doing a, you know, a, a delete with a lightweight transaction, I'm doing a read, obviously I could get back data that, that shouldn't you know, be there. It should have been deleted. Depending on the ordering. When yeah, depending on the ordering in. or you know, vice versa. I yeah. could have already deleted you know, something I was trying to read. or. Bad things can happen. Right. So you don't, you don't want to mix up transactions, and it, it gets 
kind of more complicated the deeper down that rabbit hole you get. Right. But um, yeah, suffice it to say, people can get some very unexpected behaviors out of their uh, data set. Okay, um, so your recommendation is kind of go all in. Yeah, it, do it one way or do it yeah. the other and then just call it a day. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Do you have any other best practices that you want to share about using lightweight transactions? Um, I would say really just understand what it is going into it. Know the cost. I mean, obviously, when, when we're adding the Paxos in that, that yeah. creates network traffic, there, there's a cost to using these. We're, we're actually right. in the cap theorem. We're moving from kind of the, um, the fault tolerant, available, kind of more into like the fault tolerant, um, consistent. consistent. So you're prioritizing more you're, consistency over right. availability. And, and yeah, the availability obviously goes down. Right. Um, kind of a rough number that's been thrown around in, in, in a lot of different um, kind of discussions has been somewhere in between like four and five times the uh, the time to do one of these queries as you would with like a normal standard query. And obviously that changes depending on what right. the query is. Okay. So, it's gonna, so you're going to take a latency hit on a write. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And, and anything you anything where you're adding an extra extra network hop, um, right. yeah, you know, it's just the way it is. Because if you think about it, what you're talking about is there's so there's actually uh, like two levels of um, two stages of conversation happening in the Paxos right. that are conversations between the different nodes that are agreeing on this transaction. Right. So of course it's going to involve a lot more network, a lot more uh, waiting for right. calls to go back and forth. You know that said though. In the situations where you need guarantees, they are what you want to use. Right. Trying to sit there and do like a CL all and, and make this you know crazy structure around it so you can be as close as possible to guaranteed consistency. Right. Um, it's just not worth it when it comes down to it. When you have something that will guarantee and you know, might even end up kind of being more performant once you're done building up right. this monolith of a Yeah, so uh, I think this is one of those cases where, you know, Cassandra has some very particular values about what it's, yes. uh, the palette of things that it's kind of trying to limit to you right. so that it can guarantee very high throughput, very high performance. Right. And then we've kind of added in these little extra elements like lightweight transaction yeah. and batches that sort of allow you to get a little well, bit more tune consistency. It. Yeah, so basically, End of the day, Cassandra is incredibly tunable for what you need. You know, you yeah. just you just have to basically use the right thing for your use case. We've got lots of knobs, lots of levers. If you understand what each of them does, you can actually make Cassandra do some pretty crazy things. Awesome. So, yeah. Okay, good. And if you want to learn more about these kind of topics, uh, we're having a boot camp at our Accelerate conference. So all day workshop where you can come and get some get some hands on, actually do some real app dev. It's going to be good times. Um, and of course, come to the Accelerate conference uh, in May in Washington, D.C. area. We're going to be there. Yes. Uh, we'll be available to talk. Uh, going to be a lot of great talks. The community, we're gathering the tribe together again. So come join us there, and we look forward to seeing you.